Objective. After reviewing this video, you will be able to describe how covalent bonds occur, define dipole, describe the difference between nonpolar covalent bond and polar covalent bond, describe how coordinate covalent bonding occurs, and explain the meaning like dissolves like. Covalent bonding. The sharing of pairs of electrons that belong to two different atoms. So, for example, we'll have hydrogen and chlorine. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and it wants one more. Hydrogen has one valence electron, and it wants one more. We'll explain this more later on in the video. Dipole. A charge imbalance between atoms. So, what I mean by this, as we look on this picture over here to the right, we see this funny little squiggly sign in a minus and a funny little squiggly sign in a plus. Now, what that means is this symbol right here means partially. So, this is partially negative and this. H over here is a partially positive. And so what happens in a dipole, uh, there's an unbalance of charge. So the electron tends to hang around one atom more than the other. Can you guess which one? That's right, the oxygen. Because oxygen is partially negative, so the electron, which is negative, hangs around the oxygen a little bit more. Did you know? Why can certain insects walk on water? Well, it has to do with water's polarity. That polarity causes water molecules to become attracted to other water molecules, creating a high surface tension. Because of this, very light insects can actually move on the water without breaking those attraction. Those attraction of molecules is called hydrogen bonding. Covalent bonding. Let's sum it up. So covalent bonding is the sharing of electrons between two atoms. Uh, it's generally between a nonmetal and a nonmetal. And will occur if the electronegativity difference is less than two. So we'll say covalent bonding uh, we have some of the electrons from this purple um, uh, atom of oxygen being shared with along with some of the electrons from the red atom of oxygen we'll go a little bit more in depth and a little bit on why they share And make note that when they do share, that sharing creates what's called a molecule. Let's talk about shared electrons. When we have an electron from one atom being shared with another electron from another atom, what we end up having is two shared electrons. And this will form what's called a single bond. When we have two electrons from one atom being shared with two electrons from another atom, so we have four total shared electrons, we get what's called a double bond. And then a triple bond is just six shared total electrons. Covalent bonded molecules are soft, typically. Uh, they have low melting point and boiling points compared to ionic bonds. Uh, they're not the greatest conductors and they'll exist as either solids, liquids, and gases. Like water 
uh, as a liquid, or oxygen, which would be a gas, or we have uh, diamond, which is just pure carbon. However, I do want to note that carbon has a high melting point. So some circumstances, we have covalent bonds that have high melting points. But typically, the ones we talk about will have low melting points slash boiling points. All right, so we're going to use the Lewis structure to show how we share electrons. So we have hydrogen here, which has one valence electron. And then we'll have chlorine, which has seven valence electrons. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is that hydrogen here has one valence electron. However, it's going to want one more in order to look like helium to satisfy the octet rule. And so what will happen is hydrogen will like be like, hey, uh, electron, come over here. Hang out with me. Then you have chlorine over here. Well, chlorine has seven valence electrons, and it wants one more. So it's like, no. Well, how about, you know, I have seven, but, you know, hydrogen electron, come hang out with me. And then I'll have a full satisfied octet. And so we created like a Venn diagram here saying, showing that hydrogen, you know, has two electrons now. And then we'll show with this side of the Venn diagram that chlorine has eight valence electrons. So they're being shared. And I'm going to show this shared with a line. It's going to connect these two electrons. Okay. So like in a Venn diagram, you have one side versus another side. And what's in the center is what's like. And right here, they're being shared, and it's being represented with a line. Let's use another example, but I won't use the Venn diagram. I'll just show them being connected. So we'll have carbon, okay? And then we'll have two oxygens. Now, carbon has four valence electrons. It wants to have eight, so it wants four more. Well, it's going to have to end up taking two of them from this oxygen, and two from this oxygen. And so what you have is oxygen with six valence electrons. And this one has six valence electrons as well. I should note that oxygen has six valence electrons, but it wants eight. And so it's going to share two electrons with the carbon so that it, it can have eight valence electrons. And so what ends up happening is this oxygen now, let's count how many valence electrons around it has. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight valence electrons around all the oxygens. And the carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, when you only have one line, uh, one shared, uh, two total electrons, but uh, one electron from each, you have what's called a single bond. And then when we come over here, we have what's called a double bond because we have two electrons from this oxygen being shared with two electrons from the carbon. And we have four total electrons being shared. Nonpolar covalent bonds. So, electrons are shared equally. So, nonpolar is when you have electrons being shared equally. So, there is small or no electronegativity difference. Uh, typically, it's the same elements being bonded. And so, let's think of our diatomic elements. You know, Mr. Hofbrinkle, the man who never likes to be alone. So Hofbrinkel being hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine. Polar covalent bonds, on the other hand, are electrons uh, where they're shared unequally. 
uh, there's an electronegativity difference between 0 0.5 and 1.7. And because the electrons are shared unequally, we're going to have the dipoles come into effect, creating a partially positive and a partially negative end. Okay, so if the electron hangs out on one side more than the other, it's going to be partially negative. Let's use an example. Okay, we are going to use hydrogen and chlorine. So what's going to happen is the electron will be pulled closer towards the chlorine. And that has to do with electronegativity. Who remembers what electronegativity is? Or, uh, yes, you? That's right. It has to do with drawing electrons. And so, because chlorine has an electronegativity of 3, hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, the electron is going to be drawn closer towards the chlorine. And so, the chlorine end will be partially negative, and the hydrogen end becomes partially positive. The electron is not being taken. However, it's just going to hang around the chlorine more because it is more electronegative. Now, uh, we also can use the difference between the two to tell us if it's covalent or ionic, or even between polar covalent and nonpolar. Well, if we did the difference 3 minus 2.1, we would get 0 0.9. And because it's in the range of 0 0.5 to 1.7, it would mean that it is polar covalent. Uh, here is a chart of electronegativity that you guys can use to your discretion. You can write it down, you can use it to make sense more of these notes, or even go back and use it for the ionic podcasts. So let's go over coordinate covalent. All right. uh, that's just when shared electrons come only from one atom. And so over here, the difference between the two pictures, well, the unshared pair of electrons of oxygen, we have this unshared pair. What happens is maybe an H+, plus, which has no electrons, will come along and attach itself. And so the electrons have only come from the oxygen over here. Okay. And then down here, we have this unshared pair of electrons from the nitrogen. And so we'll have maybe another H plus that has no electrons come and attach itself to the unshared pair of electrons. And then last, we have like dissolves like. So what that means is that polar substances will only dissolve in polar substances. So for example, water is polar, so it only will dissolve with other polar substances. We can bring in a nonpolar substance, like oil, and it won't mix. And so we can also say that nonpolar substances only dissolve with other nonpolar substances. So take note in that the nonpolar substance does not mix with the polar substance. So only like dissolves like. Oil, which is nonpolar, will only mix with other nonpolar substances, and water, which is polar, will only mix with other polar substances.